In this video, I'm going to show you how to use pivot table calculated field and calculated items to automate your reporting and analysis using pivot tables. You will also learn why sometimes the calculated item field is grayed out and really what is the difference between the calculated field and calculated item. You will learn to add useful fields and items in your pivot table and you will also learn how to add formulas to your calculations such as sum, if and and functions. So watch till the end because if you haven't started using calculated items and fields, you're probably missing out on a lot of automation. So let's start and create our pivot table. We'll press in the control and A keys. So this will select all of the data and click on insert pivot table. Create a new sheet for the pivot table. Now what I want for this pivot table is the customer name. So I'm going to bring the customer name to the rows section. I also want the calendar month. And I want gross and net sales and standard margin, which I'll bring to the value sections. So gross sales, net sales, and standard margin. Okay. And let's just close the pivot table fields for a moment. So we have more space. And the way I like to set up my pivot table is change the layout to tabular form. And also I like to repeat the uh, names on each row so so I will right click on the customer name field click on field settings layout and print repeat item labels click OK at this point if I click on one of the values and click on the pivot table analyze menu and select fields items and sets you see that the calculated field option is available but calculated item option is turned gray or is turned off. In order to turn on the calculated item, I have to click on one of the rows. So I can either click on the customer name or the calendar month and select any cell within that field. Then if I click on the fields, items and sets, you can see that the calculated item option is available now. But what is the difference between a field and an item? So go back to your original data and this is the data with which we created this pivot table. All these columns at the top or uh, the titles at the top, these are your fields, right? And all the data underneath these fields is your item. You will understand that in more detail as I explain with examples. So let's go back to our pivot table and I'm gonna start with creating two fields first and then we'll move to calculated items. So the first field I wanna create is uh, the difference of gross and net sales, which is our sales deductions. And the second field I want to create is the calculation of standard margin percentage. Okay, so let's start with the first one. So I click, uh, basically you can click anywhere for this, uh, this uh, calculation. So click on pivot table analyze menu again, fields, items and sets and calculated field. So let's call the first one deductions in the, in the name field. And the formula would be cross sales. So I double click or I can also click and click on insert field. I prefer double clicking because it's faster. Then press minus sign and your net sales. Click add. And as soon as you click add, you will see that this field is now available. So you can use this in multiple ways later as well. Anyway, you click OK and you see your deductions are now available here and quickly create the second field, calculated field. Let's call it standard margin percentage, which as you know, is your standard margin divided by your net sales. Click add and okay. So you have your standard margin available. It's currently showing a zero, but that's because it's percentage. So now you have your standard margin available as well. So now we are going to calculate the items. So as I mentioned, you have to click on one of the rows. So in this case, let's select a, because I want to calculate some items for the calendar months, right? So from Jan, Jan to December. So I click on one of the calendar months and click on the menu. And here you see, you can select the calculated item now. So when I click it, you see that now next to fields, I also have the items option, right? So the first calculation I want to create from these months is a calculation of H2, which would be the last six months. So July to December. 
So there are two ways I can do it. Select each month with a plus sign. So I start with July, double click July plus August all the way till December. And as soon as I click add and click OK, you see down here at the bottom, uh, you have a new row, which is the sum of July to uh, July to December. And you can check this, you can double check this. If I select all of these cells, you see the total is 161,329, which matches this number. Now I forgot to name this new calculated item, but I can do it directly into the pivot table as well. So let's call it H2. And I'm gonna quickly now create another calculated item, which will be the sum of Jan to, July, to June, so that we can then see some other functionality within the calculated item. Now you can also use some of the formulas when you are calculating items or fields. So this time I'm gonna try the sum formula instead. So it will be equal to sum brackets open, and then I would select the months individually. So Jan and Feb, but as you can see, I have not put the comma separator here. I have to do that, uh, but I will do that in the end. So just to be quick, I'm just gonna double click each month and June and close the brackets, but I cannot add right now. Let me add the Excel comma separators. And now I click add, click okay. And you see, I have H1 and H2 available as well. So see how this is different from calculating fields, which sort of add additional columns to the right. Calculated items are adding new items beneath your existing items. And now I can do a calculation between the new calculated items as well. So I created H2 and H1, and I wanna see a difference between H2 and H1, right? So H2 minus H1 click add okay and there you go now you can also do an average so for example if you wanted to do an average sales calculation for the 12 months you can do that i'm not going to show you you can do it yourself if you like to but the point is some of these formulas work in the calculated items calculation now what is awesome is that you can actually now filter on your new calculation which was h2 versus h1 if for example you were only focused on that and you see it's filtered on H2 versus H1 for all the customers. And just to make it look better, I'm gonna remove subtotals for each customer. So you can see that the performance for each customer uh, in the second half of the year is actually worse than the first half. You see sales have gone down a drop of 1.6 million. You can see that every time I'm changing the pivot table, uh, the formatting goes back to original. So in order to fix this formatting issue, I can right click on one of the value fields and click on value field settings, click on number format, currency, and click OK. So I just quickly updated the field settings, uh, the, uh, the formatting for currency and percentage. And now if I many make any changes to the pivot table, you see that it retains the formatting. So it's a, a one-time solution. You can see that this is a very nice summary of your calculation. And this is automated now. So every time you have an update to the report, this calculation would be done automatically. Now we are going to look at how we can use the if statement to automate our reporting a little further using the calculated fields and items option. So I have already created a pivot table. We have sales rep names, uh, some of their sales and the quantity they sold. So the first calculation I want to create is that if a sales rep sold more than $2,000, then they are eligible for a 3% commission. Okay. So how I'm going to create this calculation? I create a field and let's call it commission percentage. And you can now use the if function here, the if formula. So if sales dollar, so you double click on the sales dollar field greater than 2000, then comma separator, 3%, otherwise another comma separator, zero. Close your bracket, click add, click okay. And you can see that your 
sales commission percent is here. Now, obviously you can create another calculation to calculate the dollar amount of commission for each sales rep. So let's do that quickly. Let's call it commission dollar. And the calculation would be commission percentage times sales dollar. Click add and click OK. So here you go, you have your uh, sales commission amounts also calculated based on whether or not the sales rep have sold more than $2,000 in sales or not. And you can also use some nested commands uh, such as and and if together. So for example, if the company's policy is that if you sell for more than $2,000, you get a commission, but also if the quantity is above 30 units, then you get an additional $50, right? So in this case, uh, you can also create another calculation for this. So I'm going to click on calculate field and let's call it bonus 50. And the calculation in this case will be a mix of if and and function. So I will start with if and the next argument would be and. And as you know, the syntax of and is that uh, you have two arguments within it. So you double click on sales field to be greater than 2000 comma separator. The second argument is that your quantity sold is greater than 30. So I will double click on quantity sold greater than 30. Close the AND bracket. And then the next logic would be, the next argument would be whether this is true. If this is true, what is the result? So in this case, if this is true, we have $50. And if it's false, it would be zero dollars so 50 and zero and i close the bracket and i click on add click ok so here you go you see the bonus 50 is calculating wherever the customer the the sales rep has made sales of more than two thousand dollars and they also have sales quantity of above 30. in this case they have uh, this sales rep has sales of more than two thousand dollars so they get their commission of three percent but their sales is only 26. The quantity sold is only 26, so they do not get the additional 50. So you see it is pretty powerful. It cannot perform all the functions, especially when it involves referencing to other cells. That doesn't work, but anytime you have a calculation related to the fields or items within the pivot table, you can create those calculations, and this way you can automate your reporting and automate your calculations. Finally, you know, we have done quite a few calculations. We have created quite a few fields on this file. We have two pivot tables. So the first one in, from the earlier part of the video, which was the comparison of uh, sales, H2 versus H1, and the second one being these calculations. So how do you see on a file how many calculations you have created? Uh, Excel gives you a very good option. You can click on the same fields, items, and sets, and click on list formulas. And as soon as you click, it creates a new sheet. And here you can see that it shows you all the new fields we have created for the second pivot table. And it is showing us the three calculations that we have. So very nice for somebody else. If you are reviewing someone else's uh, pivot table file, uh, you can click on this, click on the pivot table and click on list formulas. And you can see exactly what they have done. What are the calculated fields and what are the fields that are coming from the data set? So, and you can also apply the same to the first pivot table. So again, click on the pivot table anywhere and then click on list formulas and a new sheet is created. And if you recall, we had deductions and standard margin percentage for the fields. And we also had calculated three calculated items, which were H2, H1 and H2 versus H1. And all your formulas are available there. So I think you would agree these are very powerful functions and start using them. I have uh, personally delayed the use of calculated items and calculated fields, but uh, there's a lot that can be done and your imagination is really the key here. You know, look at your reports, look at, look at the examples you are working with and see how you can automate some of the calculations that you're currently probably doing outside of the pivot table, which you could already have included in the pivot table. 
If you like this information, I have another video which is called Advanced Pivot Tables for Reporting and Analysis. Make sure you go through that one as well as I have some really useful tips and tricks there, especially for accounting and finance professionals that they can apply pivot tables in their daily life. Hope you found this information useful. If you did, make sure you click thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing to my channel as well. Thank you and bye for now.